All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, today we continue our topic as usual about the cult, it's called Islam. Uh, you know, uh, always there is something uh, to say about this cult. You know, the Muslims, uh, they always try to uh, to imply, like, or to, to make you believe that Islam uh, is a religion who is established because of a reason and the reason have to do with God and not have to do with the violence and uh, killing and deception and the uh, evil no it is God you know God uh, he want to save the world so what he said he, he you know he decided to send us a man his name is Muhammad and Muhammad is the one who get the ladder to take you to the, the you know to go to sky but you know the Muslims they always fail to tell us how Muhammad can be himself uh, a prophet if he himself he said clearly that he is not even guaranteed that he will be saved uh, today we will see how Muhammad become a prophet you know all of us we knew that uh, Muhammad he spent a big portion of his life nobody believed in him and he was not able to convince I mean if you according to Muslims the one who he convinced them within many many years was a few and most of them they are his, his slaves he owned them and he did not even free them which means they have no choice to believe in him or not uh, so what the Muslim he said to us that in the Quran there is a message and the message in this book is uh, proving that it is uh, from God. Let us say you don't want to believe in Muhammad as a prophet because he is, uh, you know, he, he doesn't look good for you. Hmm? Uh, maybe you have a certain image of a prophet, how he will be, how he behave. And this person, he don't uh, fit with the image you have in your mind. But doesn't mean really he is not a prophet because who are you to tell us how the prophet he can be? So what about the Quran, which is God words? You know, I remember when we say the Quran, the Quran is not the same as the Bible. You see, we as a Christian, we say in the Bible, we say the holy book, we say uh, the holy gospel, but it doesn't mean that every word they are written is said by God. You know, you will see this guy, he said, this woman, she said, this is not God talking. Even Satan, he's talking. However, in the Quran, everything is reported by the one, the Muslims, they call him by name, Allah. Now, some uh, uh, naive ones, uh, they've been taught that the name uh, Allah is a word meaning God. That's absolutely false. And they say to you, do you know that the Arab Christians in the Middle East, they use uh, the word Allah? Yes, this is true. They use it, but because they've been forced to use it for centuries. You know, imagine if you're uh, if ISIS occupy your town for a week, what is the word you are allowed to use? Just take a guess. So those people they are living under the occupation and the violence of the filthy religion of Islam for many many centuries. Just today, just today, a suicide bomber he entered a Christian church in Pakistan, and he suicide himself. He killed between six to eight people. And many people, many Christians, poor Christians in this country, in this church, they lost their hands, their eyes, just because a filthy idiot, he decided to go to heaven. For his prophet told him, if you kill the Christians, you go to heaven. Now, you do not need to be genius to notice that this is satanic teaching. The way to go to heaven is to kill someone else, to murder. See, it's not about just killing, like yeah, because a policeman he can kill a criminal, and it, it's still he is, you know, he is not a bad person. But here, this is a murder. So Muhammad he justified the murderer, and he justified every kind of a murder, and he made the murder is the way to go to heaven. And you know, the Bible warns us about people like Muhammad. He said, "Time will come." Our Lord, he said, time will come. And people will think by killing you, they are doing a favor to God. They're God. And this is exactly 
what they do. Yesterday, a Muslim, Nigerian Muslim in Africa, he stabbed two, uh, uh, two European from Denmark. And the excuse is that uh, the, the decision of a Trump, what, what those two Can uh, the Denmark people have to do with the Trump? Because the, the filthy religion of Islam taught them that anyone, he is European, he is a Christian, so we should kill him. This is what they believe, you know. This is a disgusting, filthy cult. And every human being should stand against it. It doesn't matter if you are a Christian or a Hindu or a Buddha. It doesn't matter because they consider anyone is not a Muslim is an enemy. Now, you know, some people, they will say to you, oh, okay, now you are teaching hate. Uh, I'm not teaching hate, my friend. I'm teaching you what the Muslims believe. If you don't believe me, give me a call. Debate me about it. Prove me wrong. We have all the source, even YouTube. I mean, go to YouTube right now and see the speech of Muslims in their mosque. You see, the Muslims, they have two kinds of speeches. They have speeches when they try to do propaganda about Islam, to fool people about it. And they have speeches inside inside the mosque. Go and, and, and watch the BBC uh, documentary where they did have secret journalists, who they are atheists, not the Christians, going inside the mosque and recording what they teach inside the mosque. This is what they teach inside your homeland. But what they say inside indoor is not what they say outdoor. This is a satanic cult. However, today we are going to discuss if the Quran really is the book of God. As the Muslims they say now I did just turn my uh, Skype on so if there is any Muslim he would like to call me uh, feel free and you can choose any topic you wish you know what I'm saying about any topic you wish any topic you wish it doesn't matter really which one if you think you are a Muslim and your religion is coming from the true God as you claim and you think that your Quran is a legitimate book then I don't understand why you will not call us to show us that we are wrong. Why Muslims are so good arguing about their religion with people who do not know their religion? You see, if I want to discuss about, uh, let's say, mathematics, I will bring two people who they are their specialty in mathematics, and let us see which one is more convincing. But you don't discuss mathematics with somebody who study uh, poetry. So the Muslims, they try to discuss Islam with people who know nothing about Islam because the whole idea is how I can fool you, not how I can teach you. You see, there is a, uh, there is a, a religious person it doesn't matter what religion i mean a buddha hindu whatever there's a religious person who teach about his religion but he's honest you know i am assuming if i'm talking to a, a buddha priest which i believe that his, his belief is wrong however I, I i think if i speak to him about his religion he will not start giving me lies about what he's saying and what he teach and what he learned and what he believe i think he will give me a decent answer based in his belief that is not the case for the Muslim. A Muslim is a person who is encouraged to deceive and to lie. Now, how we can learn about such a religion, the followers of it, they lie about their religion. That for sure will make it harder. However, Thanks God, there is people who speak the language of the Quran. There is people who study Quran. There is people they spend a lot of time of their life learning about this cult, and those are the one who can teach us. I receive an uh, uh, an email from a guy he claimed to be Christian, but I later I discovered that he's Abdul. Just to give you an idea how the Abdul function. This Abdul, he sent me an email saying to me, 
if you stop insulting the Muslims more people will listen to you so I said okay thank you for the advice then he sent again he said uh, and he and he, he mentioned in the email uh, go and see how many uh, people they watch etc uh, uh, etc et person I said okay no problem then he emailed me again he said uh, you should stop insulting the people you know the Muslims stop insulting them and I said okay no problem okay no problem I know how what, what I'm doing anyway so he keep mentioning the name of that person that he is having more viewer uh, more viewer than me so the Muslim he is claiming to be Christian so in order to make me as a Christian feel maybe somehow jealous that there is somebody else he speak about Islam but he have more of you more than me so I will might say something against this person let me tell you Muslims I say and I pray that may the Lord bless anyone who is exposing this filthy cult it doesn't matter what his name I love them all even if they are atheist so you know I will not be jealous from someone he have more viewers because by the way you are mistaken I have more viewers than any because I encourage people to download my videos and I don't have my videos in my channel actually I mean myself every few months I down I delete all my videos to be sure that people are downloading my videos and now if you type my name in, in Facebook you will be scared and in, 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 in YouTube you will be scared so there is no way somebody will search about Islam and he will not be watching my video and I'm not worried and I will not be never be jealous and I am so happy to see that even there is some people who have only my videos they have more subscribers than me because at the end of the day they are subscribing to my channel because they are watching my videos so we are not this quality and when the Muslims he try you, you see you remember in chapter 5 verse number 14 where Allah he said I will spread hate and enmity between each other do you remember guys the verse the Quran says I will spread hate and enmity between each other so the Muslim trying to practice the teaching of his God or let us say the devil the God of Islam he sent me somebody trying to make me feel jealous from other Christian and feel that I should hate him for he is doing maybe uh, you know let us say better in somehow so you know let us spread hate let us make the Christian fight uh, you know this is the this is the this is Islam this is Islam and we are not going to fail into the trap of the filthy cult of Islam what is more enough a proof for us that there is a God Muslims they follow his name is Allah he says in the Quran that he have a duty and he have a mission to do and this mission is says as we see in the front of us from those who call themselves a Christians we did take a covenant and I do not know which covenant he's talking about this idiot but they forgot a good part of the message that was sent to them let us say for the sake of argument they forgot all the message is that a reason to say we so we string them with enmity and hatred unless you are the devil Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Let us say that for the sake of argument, there is somebody have a covenant with God. What is the reason for this God to say, I am going to spread hate and enmity between them? I mean, what is the what you see? God supposedly he sent his messengers to save those who they are sick, not those who they are healthy. That's what Jesus said. He said, I came for the sick one. When the Jews they said to Jesus, Why are you associating with those with the tax collector? And they know that they you know Jesus, he said. I am I came for the sick I didn't came for the healthy if you are healthy I will not be here it's like you're asking uh, uh, the the, uh, uh, the emergency or you are calling uh, a doctor and then you are asking the doctor what are you doing here you should not be here between the sick one you should not you should be between the healthy this is stupid so look the, the the cult of Islam is based on what the logic of this cult if you don't believe in the cult of Muhammad Muhammad he said that his God he have a duty and that is a duty the duty is to spread hate and enmity between us this is why I believe strongly that anyone he divide the Christians he is serving Allah 
without knowing. You see some stupid from I, I don't know when I name it churches by itself, but let's say in general, someone he is a stupid Catholic, he hate the Protestant, someone he is a stupid Protestant, he hate the Catholic, someone he is an Orthodox, he hate etc. Those are not serving God, those are serving Allah. There is nowhere in the Bible Jesus said to us to do that. Even Jesus said, we have to love our enemy. So imagine we love, we've been ordered to love our enemy, but we cannot love someone he is, a Protestant or a Catholic or Orthodox. You must be serving the devil, which is Allah. I do not need to agree with you in certain issues, but doesn't mean that if you don't believe in the same exactly what I believe, that means you are the devil. The Catholic, they love Jesus, they worship Jesus, they believe in the salvation of Jesus, same as the Protestants, same as the Orthodox, and the difference between them is really stupid. It's just the devil trying to divide us and trying to make us hate each other. And this is exactly the message of Islam. Divide so we can conquer. And many people do not understand. You see, I have many people, they stop even giving me donation because I don't take a side you see I don't care you give me donation or not I'm not for sale I am NOT for sale you Satan cannot buy me anyone who believe in me and he die he will live this is the Lord words so it is not someone he is a Catholic, it is not someone he is a Protestant, it's not someone he is an Orthodox, it is a believer in the Messiah and the salvation of the Messiah. He is the truth, he is the word of God, he is the son of God, he is the Alpha, he is the Omega, he is the resurrection, he is the life, he is the light, he is everything, he is the bread. So whoever believe in this, he is my brother and sister in Christ. Anything else, it doesn't count for me. So I am quoting for you this to be aware that when we are divided, we are not serving the Messiah. We are serving the devil, which his name in this case, Allah. This is what he wanted for you. It's in the front of your eyes. This guy is not even hiding it. He is saying that we are going to string them with hate and enmity. This is why you will see many who they are fake Christians. They are willing to attack each other, but they don't dare even to speak a word against Islam. Why? Because they are controlled by the devil. They are controlled by Allah. So you will see someone inviting someone to talk about certain Christian church to attack them, but he will welcome the Muslims to speak about their God, even to teach their children how to pray to Allah. You know what I mean? Do you understand what I'm saying? Who cares if this person is a Catholic or a Protestant? Are you are you are, are we stupid or what? What we care for that this guy, he have one Lord, his name is the Messiah, the Lord, the Savior. He might have some wrong ideas I don't agree with him about, with you know, like with him, like having a picture, but that will not make him an infidel, will not make him a kafir, will not make him satanic. This guy he loved Jesus to the point he have some things I don't agree with him. That is not an enough reason. And if there is anyone, let us say, having an image of Mary is sin, right? I believe it is not right. You know, if you are having the image to worship, but any one of us did not do sin, and he does not, all of us, we are sinners. So if the one who do sin, but he loved Jesus, and he believed Jesus is the only Savior, and because he did sin, then he is not good no more, we're all of us not good. Who of us is not doing sin or he did sin in his past and he will do sin tomorrow? Any one of us claim to be the angel of God? Even angels, they commit sin. As we see, Satan himself was an angel. So let us be smart and let us love each other and let us make the devil, Allah, unhappy. This is what Allah will feel when he see the Christians are united. And Allah will have a party with his devilish Muhammad. 
when he see more bloodshed and more hatred in this earth we should not hate the atheists we should not hate the, the the Hindus we should not hate the Buddhas we should not even hate the Muslims that will make Allah himself angry the message of the hate is not part of our book it is part of the plan of Allah but Jesus because he loved the world not the Christians not the Hindus not the Buddhas he loved the whole world this is what our Lord is about he sent his only begotten son to save us so the one who offer love he will receive it back and the one who offer hate he will receive it back and this is why the Muslim they die with their hatred you see if you go uh, and see uh, the, even the average of uh, age in, in the in Islamic countries you see them they don't live long because they have hatred for everything they are angry people they have hatred they have evil in their heart they cannot accept other person except that he is not believing in what I believe so I should hate him and that always this hate energy would destroy you Do you know what I mean? Don't let don't let the hate kill you. Hatred is not only a sin if you are a believer. Even even like a, a, a science proof that hatred can destroy you yourself. It's like an inner uh, poison. It's a poison you do not need you know need to to swallow you have it inside you is it's going to destroy you so try to to get rid of hatred and jealousy and etc in the same time nothing wrong with being angry however there's a good anger and bad anger there's an angry of a decent person he tried to save others and there's an anger of a person he tried to kill others So let us keep the good anger. When we see something wrong, nothing wrong with getting angry with the wrong. Now, do we have any Muslim here? He have the courage and the knowledge to show us that his religion is not a cult. Anyone? If there is anyone. And I don't want in the chat a bunch of kids. Please, if you are a kid, just leave and watch different channel. Go and watch Mickey Mouse. Watch cartoon. I don't like drama. There are some people, they are like, uh, they never grow. They are like kids. This is a serious matter. And if you don't fit here, if you are too much emotional, go watch cartoon. Do we have any Muslim here? Anyone? Any half one? Any quarter one. I receive emails from a Christians that Muslims they are saying to them that the Christian prince is lying to you. I say to those Christians, please don't send me those emails. What about you say to them? This guy he go on air and he keeps staying there for hours saying, Who wanna call me? How come? They are not willing to call. I mean, I wish, I wish that uh, someone like Shabir Ali, he will make a live program and say, who dare to call, to call me? I will be the first. What do you think, guys? Do you think I'm going to do it or not? I wish. 
so I'm giving you a golden opportunity because if somebody is a liar I mean this is the best opportunity is to show everybody from those who listen to him that this guy he do not even know what he's talking about so today I am willing here to take any challenge from any Muslim about something in the Quran can show us that Muhammad is a prophet do we have any Muslim have any no problem if you do not like to call it's okay you can give it to me in the text so you as a Muslim what do you have for me to prove to me that Muhammad is a prophet of God if there's any Muslim he can offer me something you see if we search in the internet let me do that as long the Muslims are not calling there's tons of articles written about Islam and about Muhammad I will search you know like I will type uh, the proof that Muhammad is a prophet of God random search I don't know really what I'm going to find I'm not going to open Christian website I'm going to check Muslim website okay the spirit of Islam this is sound like interesting sound like a Muslim website correct was Muhammad a true prophet let us read a few words to be sure that this is a prophet uh, I mean this is Islamic website and I say that because you see true prophet must receive their call from God especially if he is uh, the founder of religion they say angel Jibreel. so maybe this not is not a Christian website I don't know let's see we want the, we, we want you want I mean Islamic website it was Muhammad oh, here we go this is a Muslim website look at this I mean look at this the Muslims they could not Prove to us that Muhammad is a prophet from their book. So they start saying Muhammad is in the Bible. Do you see it? <laughs> I thought the Bible is corrupt. And, and why Muhammad is in the Bible, my friend? The Bible of the Christians, I thought it's satanic and it's forbidden in, in Islamic countries. And now you are telling me you are forbidding the Bible which the name of Muhammad there from your Muslim countries Bible prophecies about the advent of Muhammad here we go the blessing of Ishmael and Isaac you know I you know I really I really I really love when the Muslims they speak about Muhammad and Ishmael and etc uh, I have an open challenge for any Muslim to prove to me that Muhammad is from Ishmael not only Muhammad that the Arab all themselves all of them they are from Ishmael if you have my book or whatever any of them you will see that according to Muslims Muslim books they believe that Ishmael he married from the enemy of the tribe of Muhammad do you know what does that mean anyone have an idea what does that mean imagine I am an Arab okay supposedly I'm an Arab like the rest of the Muslims they hate the Jews huh? and then you say to me that Ishmael he married a Jew and then my kids are from Ishmael <laughs> I mean what a drama man how Ishmael is where Muhammad is descended from when uh, uh, Ishmael did marry according to the Muslims to the tribe of Jerham is the tribe of Jerham is the tribe of Muhammad or this is the tribe the same tribe which Muhammad a grand, a grand, a grand, a grandfather 
supposedly he killed and he kicked out of Mecca I mean stupidity and madness same time according to the Muslims that Ishmael when he didn't marry from that tribe he learned from them at the age of 11 Arabic what does that mean that means the Arab they were Arab before Ishmael that means the Arab they speak Arabic before Ishmael so imagine next month I'm going to China and then I marry a Chinese woman her name is Zhu Chu and then after I marry her my family they claim that all the Chinese are descendant from me do you understand I mean we have a nation already is established and they are Arab supposedly according to your Islamic books so how the Arab they are from Ishmael if Ishmael himself he learned Arabic from the Arab stupidity but let me tell you something here because they are desperate to bring Muhammad some honor but he have no honor so the only way to give him some honor is to make him descendant from Ishmael and that will make him descended from Abraham and that will make him uh, sound like okay accepted this is the whole idea you know what I mean otherwise you know what, what those people are talking about Ishmael have nothing to do with the prophet of the Abdul it's a fiction same time let us say I am me myself I am descendant from Isaac not Ishmael which is more important person even in the Quran what does that mean I mean is that a, is that a qualifying me to be a prophet of God for for being the son of someone is that what the prophet of God mean it is something it's a business I inherit same time uh, speak of God the promise to Abraham that his descendant before any child was born to him this is about Muhammad guys do you see it this is about Muhammad must be I mean <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, God the promise promise after the birth of Ishmael and before the birth of Isaac. Hmm. Yeah. Uh Genesis uh, 21. Isaac is specifically blessed by Ishmael. Was specifically blessed and the promise by God to become a great nation. You know Muslims, are you great nation? I mean, is the Arab because the, the, the great nation here is about descendant. So is all the Arab descendant from Muhammad? According, according to you, huh, that Muhammad is from a tribe which is from Ishmael, which means only that the tribe is the descendant from Ishmael. Which means all of you together are not even 200 people exist in this earth today. So what is the great nation? The Arab are exist before Ishmael according to Islam. So they have nothing to do with Ishmael. Now there is some naive the teaching churches that the Arab are descended from Ishmael too. But for sure this is not right right because uh, you know uh, even if Ishmael ever he married an Arab woman or <coughs> let's say a Bedouin woman that will not make his children Arab. As an example, Moses himself, he did marry a woman. She is not from the children of Israel. What we never heard anyone saying that the children of Moses are the Arab. Even though he did marry a Bedouin woman, a woman living in the desert. According to Islam, and the Quran confirmed that, that the children, they belong to their father, not to their mother. If you remember when Muhammad he wanted to take his own son wife 
so he decided to stop the tradition of the Arab for adoption so what Muhammad he said he said it's not right it's not right to call anyone except by their their father all right let us see what does that mean the right thing for Allah is to call somebody by his father not by his mother if Ishmael is a son of Abraham what is the nationality of Abraham anyone knows What is the nationality of Abraham? Who is a smart Muslim? He can tell us. Ishmael is a son of Abraham, and the Quran says, You, the children, they always belong to their father. All right. So, what is Abraham was a Hebrew? How Abraham became a Hebrew? How does that happen? Abraham is a Hebrew? There was no Hebrew. The Hebrew are born from Abraham. All right? Now, Hebrew actually is not even an ethnic group, you know. Uh, uh, Abraham is born where? Which country? Which country Abraham is born in? Who want to tell me? I know there is a delay in the text, like, you know. Which country? Yeah, Ur. Where is Ur? In Iraq. Who is the people of Iraq? People of Iraq are either Assyrian or Chaldean, right? So he is from the people who speak Aramaic. He is from there. Have nothing to do with the Arab. He is not an Arab. He is from the people of that country. Remember, the Arab never never entered that country until until long after, even after the death of Muhammad. So he is from a country have nothing to do with the Arab. Their language is Aramaic. And those people are the people of Abraham, and he is one of them, and they are like he belonged to them. So Abraham, he have a wife, and he marries second wife. Ishmael is the son of Abraham from his slave, which became his wife. Her name is Hajar, and she is from where? Anyone knows? The wife of Abraham, she was from where? She was from Egypt, right? Hajar. Okay. So if my father is an Iraqi, Assyrian, or Chaldean, and my mother is an Egyptian, the son is an Arab? <laughs> Remember, the Egyptians, they have nothing to do with the Arab. Egypt today is after the occupation, they call themselves Arab because this is what the Muslims do. They occupy a country, they force you to speak the language, they make you change your name, and then they make you forget even about your ethnic group. Africa is Egypt, and Egypt is Africa. Arab are not African, period. 4,000 Arab attack Egypt and there was almost 4 million Egyptian in Egypt at that time but those 4 millions they are living like you know they have no government because they were occupied by the Roman so it was very easy for the Arab to take over or what they need to do just kick out you know uh, uh, a couple of hundreds of uh, uh, the soldiers and a corrupt uh, ruler like Muhammad and that's it. The people don't even care. You know, I mean, they are corrupt. But when the Muslims came, 
the Egyptian Christians they've been forced into Islam and they force them to speak Arabic and they force them to change their names and they force them you know you can go and read the pact of Omar that will give you an example about what the Muslims they did exactly for those who they are Christians now going back to the topic if Abraham is not an Arab Hajar is not an Arab how Ishmael is an Arab What is the logic that Ishmael, the language he speak? Anyone can tell me? If my father is Aramaic, my mother is an Egyptian. What is the logic I should be talking? Who can help me? We have a topic, my, my friend. We will not change now to Shia and Sunni. Anyone? If I am Aramaic, I speak Aramaic. My wife is an Egyptian what the language the son should know it can be only Aramaic it can be both it's possible that he learned Egyptian from his mother right but he don't know Arabic so how the Arab who they are exist according to Muslims before Ishmael they became the children of Ishmael are we getting the point And as long Ishmael he learned Arabic himself according to Muslim books remember I'm not even quoting Christian books according to the Muslims that Ishmael he married from the tribe of Jerham and this is the tribe used to occupy Mecca before Muhammad tribe and then the grand the grand the grand you know it's a tribe business they fight and they kicked those tribe and they took over Mecca so the tribe of Muhammad they took over Mecca by kicking out the tribe of Jerham which is supposedly according to Muslim books Jerham he married from them now the Muslims they have many funny stories about Ishmael too as usual they fabricate a lot of stuff as an example that Ishmael he used to fly using uh, the flying donkey of Muhammad to go to Jerusalem every night <laughs> you know let it go let it go let it go now as long as the Muslims agree that Ishmael he did marry from Jerham and he is and the Quran says that we should call them by their father so the children of Ishmael should not be Arab they should be called by their father whatever the father is it's not the father who will become like the children you know the father he will not be an Arab for marrying an Arabian woman if this is what happened it is the children's who they are going to carry the name of their father whatever he is he's a German they will be German he's Chinese they will be Chinese so the Muslim they contradict their own books and their own logic and their own tradition and their own religion just for the sake of false statement to make Muhammad that he is coming from Ishmael same time if we go in the Quran we will find this A lot of contradictions and stupidity. Let us see. Chapter 29, verse number 27. Allah in the Quran, He said, I hope a Muslim will call and so we can love together. And we gave Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and ordained among his progni prophethood guys do you see what it's the Quran is saying <laughs> where is Ishmael any Muslim can explain to me where is Ishmael did Allah forget Ishmael Ishmael he is the older 
and it doesn't make sense that Allah himself he say in the Quran that Allah he made the childhood or the child of the the the, the child the children of Abraham they are prophet and the frame their childhood the prophethood and he named only two names where is where is the prophecy and where is Allah saying to you Muslims that from the children of Ishmael they will be prophets is uh, guys is the idea clear is what I'm saying clear you the, the, their God Allah whoever who hey, made this Quran is stupid I mean you know this this is stupid talk he's just trying to copy from the Bible and he forgot that later he will claim that he is supposed to be Muhammad he, he will claim that he is coming from uh, you know he should fix it I, I believe this is something he copied from Waraq Abdul Nofal uh, he have nothing to do with it this is what Waraq Abdul Nofal he said so he is a copy paste person he have no idea he put it there but he do not know here that he's making a mistake because this verse confirm that the prophethood is from the progeny of two names which mean one at the end Isaac and Jacob so in order to be a prophet you have to be the son of Jacob the son of Isaac the son of Abraham where is Ishmael and what does not make sense here that Allah he considered Ishmael a prophet, but yet he is not putting his name to speak about his childhood. Because the purpose here of this verse is to talk about prophethood, they will be from who? There is they say that other verses saying that he is a prophet so what you know they say that Ishmael is a prophet in the reverse but here we are talking about the the, the the from his children they will be the prophets you see let us say God he made me a prophet but he said you know I have a brother and my God he said from my brother I am a prophet now and my brother, his children, they will be the, the from his uh, from his seeds will be prophethood. That's mean I am just a prophet, but from my children they will not be. You see, Allah here is mentioning that the prophethood is going to come from the lineage of who? If Allah he keep his mouth shut, but always the one, the stupid one, he cannot keep his mouth shut as usual. He have to do poo poo. So the more he talk, the more he do poo poo. Now he told us specifically that the prophethood are going to come from who he is not saying that the prophethood is going to be from Abraham only and that will make it possible that it's going to be from Ishmael and from Isaac you know what I mean eh. I mean if he say from uh, Abraham alone eh, that's it Abraham but he is here he's making it he's making a lineage you see don't you see what he's saying there he said Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we made it from his seed the prophethood. The seed of who he mentioned to us, the seed of who those are his seed where the prophethood will come from. So, where is Ishmael? What happened? Allah, he forgot about Ishmael, he dropped in the way. You know what I mean? So the Quran itself is against what the Muslims they say, but who care? I mean, the Muslims are the last one to know. The Muslims they like only to quote articles written by other stupid idiot who himself he have no idea what he's talking about. If we go to the verses they are quoting for us from the Bible, we will see that those verses themselves they are going to condemn Muhammad. As an example, the they know the uh, uh, the the in the Old Testament in Isaac and etc. Isaiah it says that the, the people will when when uh, the messenger will come to them they will dance and and sing and rejoice 
and etc. And then, okay, but my, my, my music is haram in Islam. Everything in the Old Testament is against Islam. But the Muslims, because they are so desperate, they try to find a place for their prophet in the Old Testament. Another question. Why Muhammad did not say to the Jews in his time that my name is written in the book of Genesis? Do you know what I mean? Are you Muslims trying to say to us that your prophet was dumb and he is stupid and his God did not inspire him and he did not tell him, hey, I, I spoke about you already, by the way, in the book of Genesis chapter number 12, in the book of Genesis chapter number 17, in the book of Genesis chapter number 21. Huh? How come the Muslims today, they found out after 1400 years But Muhammad himself is the last one to know. <laughs> Are we learning, guys, how we can get this stupid thing busted? So a, a, a dump Abdul who exists 1400 years after Muhammad, he is more smart than his prophet. He is telling us, I am more educated, more than my, my donkey. My donkey was ignorant. He did not know how to write, how to read. And his God is donkey too. He cannot read for him. And Jibreel, he is ignorant about the Torah and the Bible. So they have no idea what is written in the Torah. So he decided not to tell because they didn't know. Then we have another angel. His name is Didat. Muhammad the Ahmad Didat. Ahmad Didat, he is more powerful than Allah and more powerful than Jibreel. Somebody told Ahmad Didat the name of Muhammad, Muhammad in the Bible. Ahmad did that few years before he was saying that the book of Je uh, the, the, the Old Testament is the book of porn in the same chapter the song of songs he found later that the name of Muhammad is there but he is the same guy he was saying that the song of songs is porn so look how they switch upside down from porn to holy Do we have any Abdul? Any Abdul, he have an idea what we are talking about. Huh? Why your prophet do not know those things? I'm just asking question. Why you know your prophet in the time of, uh, of uh, people around him? He didn't say to them, you know what? Okay, open the Torah. Open chapter, etc. Open Isaiah, Isaiah 21. Open Genesis 20, uh, 17. Open Genesis 12. And read, my name is there. My, come on, read it. Why he did not do that? Allah did not tell him. Why none of you Muslims in the last 14th century discover it? This is just a new agenda in the last few years. How come Allah did not inspire Jibreel, Muhammad, even Aisha, even uh, the boyfriend of Muhammad? I mean, the whole of everybody, not even one. And look, look what this Abdul is saying. Let me show you. This Muslim Abdul here is saying, your, your, your shaitan Paul. Let me show you another stupid things about the Muslims. How come their stupid prophet never say the word about Paul, but the smart Abdul today, they attack Paul? Question. Are you saying to me, Muslims, that your prophet was a donkey? He did not know that Paul was a bad person and you know? Is that what you are trying to say to us? This is exactly what the Muslims are saying. That Muhammad was a donkey. His God was a donkey, Jibreel was a donkey, and now we have a corporation of donkeys. But after 1400 years of following the donkey Muhammad, we have a new mule who said Paul is the one who corrupted. So now it is time to correct the education of the Prophet Muhammad, for he was a donkey who do not know anything about Paul. And we Muslims today, we are smarter than the stupid Muhammad, so he know who is the one who did wrong in the Bible. Not only that, 
the stupid Muslims do not know that the name or let us say there's a three messengers mentioned in the Quran according to their own scholars one of them is Paul which mean Paul is according to the Quran is the messenger of Allah but because those donkeys they could not find anything to say they have to blame somebody so we let us blame Paul but the Bible is not written by Paul is it Paul he have messages he have letters but the Bible is not written by Paul let us say for the sake of argument the stupid Abdul is right Paul is wrong what about the four others as long as you are accusing only Paul what about the other four who they are the, the Bible written by them not by Paul as we say always garbage in garbage out and that is exactly the situation of an Abdul Muslim they are copy paste none of them even knows what he is talking about this is why they don't even dare to call what you will do if I show you that Paul is mentioned by name in your Islamic books that he is a messenger of Allah what do you will do you will you will do the the monkey dance for me he misspelled the prophet uh, you are worried about the spelling don't worry about it he is the puppet not the prophet you are right I should make it the puppet Muhammad do we have any brave Muslim here he cared to call me so you could not find any proof about your prophet to be a prophet he is a prophet not the prophet who is exists just for the sake of money and vagina so now we have to try to find him in the Bible is that correct Muhammad is like into Musa's why why Muhammad is like Moses did Allah ever spoke to Muhammad did Allah give Muhammad a written book written by his hand hello what is making Muhammad the same as Moses look at this guys in the in, in the front of us there is a verse it says that from among your brethren I will send somebody and supposedly the brothers are the Ishmael <laughs> that will be the cousin idiots stupid the Israeli to be a brother to the Israeli you have to be one of them the son of my uncle is not my brother to be my brother you have to be from the same father garbage in garbage out uh, this is called Islam City you know we just search in Google to you know so we can love you know look at this the prophet like into Moses there was hardly any two prophet nowhere so much alike as Moses why and Muhammad both were given comprehensive law code of life where is the law code of life Muhammad was given I want to see it I challenge the Muslim to show me the law code of Muhammad any Muslim want to show me where is the law code okay what is the punishment of rape in the Quran What is the punishment of rape in the Quran? I want to know. Don't tell me the Quran does not have a punishment for rape. Huh? What is the punishment of kidnapping in the Quran? What is the punishment of a breaking oath in the Quran? What is the punishment? Of disobeying your parents 
What is the punishment of beating your parents? What is the punishment of changing your religion? Where is the code? Where is the Ten Commandment? You see, the Muslims, by the way, they don't believe that Allah He gave Musa's you know Ten Commandment. No, they believe that Allah He wrote for him the whole Torah. Now imagine how big the Torah is, and imagine how many big piece of rock Musa's have to carry. <laughs> all all the Torah and rocks. <laughs> Welcome to fantasy. <coughs> Do we have any Abdul he cared to call? Muhammad, he have no law. Muhammad, he have no logic. Muhammad, he have no book. And all what he have is just a copy of others. I challenge the Muslims to show me one thing Muhammad did not kept, copy from people before him. Starting from prayer, Abolition, recitation, shaking the head when they pray. Muslims, who is the one who shake his head when he pray? Can you tell me? Is that something you took from the Jews? Where is the hat you wear in the top of your head when you go to Hajj? Where do you get this from? Huh? The small hat you put in your head. Is that the hat of the Jews? Huh? Let me show you Muhammad how he copy everything including stupid things from the Jews Let me show you <coughs> Look at this story Aisha she said that the Jews came to her and mentioned the punishment of the in the grave. Who is the one who came to Aisha? A Jews. Take a note. What the Jews mentioned? The punishment of the grave. She said to her, "May Allah protect you from the punishment of the grave." Aisha. She asked the messenger about this. Actually, there's a different hadith. Hold on. Let me find you a better hadith than this one. Where she said to her clearly that there is no such a thing. Like, what are you talking about? You know, Aisha, she laughed at her. Punishment in the grave? Like, what? <laughs> oh, let us see. I will try. To find you, how Aisha she denied that there is something called the punishment of the grave. Read with me, guys. Read with me and laugh. If we have Aisha with us right now. And we say to her, there's a punishment, it's called the punishment of the grave. What Aisha she will say to me, you are a liar. Read with me. A Jewish woman entered upon me and said, who is talking? Aisha. The, uh, the, the, the torment of the, uh, of the grave is because of urine. Because of what? <laughs> I said you are lying. <laughs> She said, no, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> we cut our skin and the clothes because of it. The message of Allah went out to pray and our voice became loud. Obviously, they are fighting now. Like, this is going to be true. What are you talking about? Are you stupid or what? So he said, What's what is this? She saw. I told him, which means Aisha is talking, what she had said. He said, she spoke the truth. Like, what the heck? This is the law of Allah? Allah will punish you in the grave because of your peace? peace? Is 
and as you see Muhammad he never heard before such a thing and the proof of that Aisha she never heard it otherwise she would not accuse the women of lying Muhammad he heard it he liked it he adopted and right away he approved it he liked the idea and then after that look look what Aisha she said after that day he never offered any prayer but he said following the prayer huh? Rabbu Jibreel wa Mika'ila wa Israfil a'idni you know like uh, the God of Jibreel and Israfil and like he starts saying things the Jews they say uh, you know help me against the horror the terror in the grave <laughs> but before that he never said that how come after this Jewish woman she mentioned the punishment of the grave Muhammad after that he never stopped talking about it and as you see Aisha she could not believe it it sounded stupid she said to him you are a liar Aisha herself she is not a donkey she knew it's a lie as you see she told them the women this is a lie this is a stupid so you're a prophet is a liar according to Aisha because whoever say this is a liar now is that this or is that teaching is something Muhammad copying from the Jews or not it is so clear that he is copying from the Jews and the proof in the front of your eyes he never mentioned that story before before never suddenly Muhammad he will never make a prayer without saying this prayer I seek refuge by Allah from the punishment of the grave why Muhammad did not start saying I seek refuge by Allah from the punishment of the grave before the Jewish woman she said to him that there is a punishment in the grave do you see what Aisha she said after that I never saw Allah apostle but seeking refuge with Allah from the punishment of the grave so Muhammad because he have no religion he's trying to copy others whatever the Jews around him they say to him and sometimes I believe you know they, they are making fun of him he accept and he believe it this is why <laughs> you will see many stories Muhammad he is teaching his followers about it and he make a Quran they are coming from the legend the legend of the Jews and he is uh, he is making them uh, uh, like a part of his religion like the flying carpet of uh, uh, Solomon the rivers who stop running because of this voice of David uh, the birds who sing with him uh, the, the the bird who is a minister of watering and irrigation and he find women who have no hair in their legs uh, a flying carpet who can carry 600,000 chairs all of this he took it from the Jews even the story <coughs> of Zulqurnayn it was a trap made to Muhammad by the Jews go and read the story you will see a Jew he came to him and he was sent by the Jews to ask him three questions one of the question was who is Zulqurnayn Muhammad he told them I will ask Allah then he check he asked around what he will say to them and suddenly he come with the story that Zulqurnayn is a messenger of God because he heard that some of the Jews they believe that he is a messenger of God <laughs> do we have any Abdul any brave Muslim so how many of you Muslims are going to be tortured in the grave because you pissed over your foot look what Muhammad he said that the most of punishment of the grave is because of urine Eww. 
if, 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 if. Look at this, guys. Look at the logic and the law of Muhammad. Allah will not torture you in the grave if you rape a woman. No. Allah will not torture you for uh, raping a child. Allah will not torture you for killing, stealing. Allah will torture you because of urine. Oof, that's deep. That's a deep shit, my friend. Urination is the main cause of the punishment in the grave. Where Muhammad he learned this? Anyone remember? Who remember? Where Muhammad he learned this stupidity? He just we just read it for you. The Jewish woman who said that to Aisha. Remember? Do you remember? Just a minute ago we said that to you. Muhammad he heard the Jewish woman. She is saying that urination is the cause of the punishment of the grave. Muhammad he copy paste. And he starts saying to anyone he see in his way, brother sister. Let's let us uh, let us call Zakir Naik and ask him for his opinion about this. I mean, obviously Zakir Naik he can give us some answers. I mean, serious answers, right? So, if we call a Muslim scholar, you see, we are giving you proofs, clear proofs that Muhammad must be a prophet of God. Otherwise, how Muhammad he knew those things? Think about it. How a prophet, how a Bedouin man he knows what is the main cause of punishment of Allah. How he knew it is the urine. Huh? Connie Zakir Naik. Hello? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, can I talk to Dr. Zakir Naik? Yes, please. He is what? He's he's urinating now. Okay, I can. I, I will wait. No, he's not urinating. Oh, he, he's he's wearing protection for urine. Uh, okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. I I, I know why. Okay. Sure. Sure. Let him take his time. Uh, okay. Uh, we will wait. It's okay. No problem. Let him take his time and urinate as much he want. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Is is that is it a urine thing? Okay. No. Hello. Welcome, Islam. Doctor Zakir Naik. It's me, Doctor Zakir Naik. We are reading a hadith, and it is sahih. It says that the Prophet he said that the most of the punishment of the grave is because of urine. Is that true? I think, I think, the one who asked you the question, his name is the Christian Prince. First of all, teeth this idiot that urine is the bend in the one is urinating. As an example, Allah will not punish a donkey for urinating. Allah will punish a Muslim. For he is not taking care of his urine. For Allah want us to be clean. As an example, if you urinate and there is like an Israeli disorder next to you and you urinate and then some of the urine fell into him, he might suit you. So you will be get killed because of your urine. So you better not to do that. And Allah saying to us that urine is the punishment of the grave or the reason, the main reason for the punishment of the grave because Allah, he hates urine. There's the three things Allah he hates and you do not know. Allah he hates urine, he had garlic, and he hates the kini. So just follow the teaching of Allah and you will be safe. Thank you very much. What the heck? I mean, this is deep, man. This is knowledge. This is God. I just found God. I was an atheist yesterday. Today I became a believer. God. He is God of justice and he will punish me in the grave because of urine. Ah, now I know why dogs, they lift their leg up. <laughs> oh boy, I know what those dogs are doing. They, are, they must be Muslims. Those dogs are so worried from the punishment of the grave. 
so when they piss they lift the leg up and the piss goes like 45 degree i mean what that's deep man that's deep and you are telling me that muhammad is not a prophet of god is it this is alone is enough for you to believe that he's a prophet i mean who can reject this who can deny this that's amazing and so beautiful so if you read the women allah will not punish you in the grave but if you have some urine in your foot Allah will punish you in the grave. He will torture you. Not only he will punish you. Now, do you know, guys, what how Allah will punish you in the grave? There's a video. I wish I can play it for you. You will die from laughing. I'm serious. There's Abdul. He made a video to explain how the punishment of the grave work. Where he explained to you that if you read Quran, the Quran will protect your anus. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I knew it from the first day that the Quran is the best way to protect the anus. I don't know how I know it, but I know it. <laughs> Allah in the grave, He will send to you a bold snake. Actually, <coughs> if we go in the Quran, oh boy. I mean, this is amazing religion. What you can say. I don't understand why why even people don't convert to Islam immediately. It's 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 logical, it's scientific, it's a smart, and it's justice. Allah will torture me because of urine urine. Hmm. Okay. The funny about Muhammad, Allah will torture them if they have some urine in their foot, but in the same time he ordered them to drink urine. I mean, how crazy is that? How if some urine came in your foot or in your hand, Allah will torture you because of that, but Allah is the same one who ordered you to drink the camel urine and make it your seven up. Huh? Anyway, let us see. <clears throat> Chapter 20, verse number 125. Oh, let us go and see what the interpretation is saying. 2125. <coughs> <coughs> hmm. You see, Muslims, we are not giving uh, our own interpretation, as you see. I mean, this is your books, your website. Thank you very much for those websites, by the way. They are very helpful. We do not know what we can do without you. I mean, imagine. What? All right. And we will raise him up blind in the day of resurrection. Oof, oof. Guys, I warn you, especially females, not to be close to me in the day of resurrection because my hands will be touching all everything around me. So don't blame me if I touch something is not acceptable. All of us in the day of resurrection, we will be raised up blown, I mean blind. <laughs> why, why Muslims, why? Look, 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 we will, we will be resurrected and their faces will be blind, dumb, and deaf. Like, what the heck? <laughs> hold on, hold on. <coughs> hold on, Abdul, hold on. The stupid Quran is full of contradiction. So isn't it you, Allah, is going to, the angels, they are going to uh, uh, blow the trumpet, and the people will hear it like what i mean what this what what this quran is talking about huh no hold on let's fix it oh 
يوم ينفخ في الصور ونحشر ونحشر المجرمين. What is that day? This is he's trying to copy from the Old Testament something that there is a trumpet and the day Allah will blow the trumpet. Okay, now if everybody is deaf and blind and mute and dump, Allah is blowing the trumpet for who? Any Muslim? What the trumpet here? What this trumpet is going to do? If we take the word trumpet and we post it in the hadith, what we will find? Hmm. The Messenger of Allah mentioned the name of the one who will sound the trumpet. Muslims, is the trumpet a music instrument? Well, I thought music instrument is haram. Why Allah Himself is using a trumpet? Isn't it trumpet haram? Allah is using a machine, what for? I mean, why? It's haram. <clears throat> what do you think? Now look here, all those hadith about the trumpet. I mean, look at all, all of this. All of this. In this hadith here, Muhammad, he said, the best of you of your days is a Friday on in it was Adam was a created what Adam was a created on Friday are you sure <laughs> you see the Muslims they have all the details man they knew even what day Adam is created and the funny the Muslim they saw us to say to us that when the Quran is speak about days it doesn't mean days it's mean millions of years billions of years days in the Quran brother it's mean period period brother it's not doesn't mean day liars Muhammad he said that Allah even created Adam in a Friday afternoon so Allah created Adam on Friday and on it the trumpet will be blowing so the trumpet will be blowing on a Friday too on it all creatures will soon will uh, will will, uh, will soon swan uh, let me see what does that mean in english if this translation is accurate uh, <clears throat> no, i don't know if this translation is too much good all right so send a great deal of peace and blessing upon me that day for your peace and blessing will be presented to me Oof. muhammad claimed to be eternal muhammad claimed here that he is god he don't die so a man he said to him "O oh, messenger of allah how our peace and blessing will be shown to you when you will be dead you know you will be sand you will be dust he said Allah has forbidden the earth to consume the bodies of the Prophet if, if, if. the Muslims they say to us that the body of the Pharaoh was found do you remember who remember the Muslim they say the miracle of the Pharaoh we spoke about it just yesterday actually does that mean the Pharaoh was a prophet? <laughs> According to Muslim books, the Muslims did not bury Muhammad for three days. 
four, three days. Most of the reference says it was Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Now, after three days, Muhammad body uh, his body swell, his belly became like a balloon. The gas is coming out like crazy. The smell is so disgusting. His nails became, they have colors on them, green and etc. And he stink. And actually, I can show you where the Muslim, they say that Muhammad body stink. Who is a Muslim is willing to call me right now to prove to you that Muhammad is a false prophet based on what you Muslims say about what happened to him when he died. Remember, Muhammad, he just said here, that the body of the Prophet is a preserved and to the point it's preserved and it's still alive to the point your prayer will be presented to Muhammad even he is dead <clears throat> no it was a three days it was a three days this is what they say in there anyway that's what the Muslim says not me I, I wasn't there so Muhammad was dead for three days and his body stink and the Muslims agree upon that and his belly was but like a balloon and you know guys why why this is happening right first of all imagine Muhammad is he, he live where which area in the desert of Saudi Arabia so imagine three days without a refrigerator in the desert how the body will smell and actually, I asked myself, first time I did read this uh, story, why the Muslim did not bury Muhammad right away? Any Muslim can tell us why the Muslims did not bury Muhammad immediately? Who is a Muslim have an answer for that? According to Islam, you can ask any Muslim, it is it is an Islamic tradition and it's a part of the religion that somebody he, he, he passed away they have to bury him before the sunset okay so why Muhammad body was not buried for three days any Muslim <clears throat> Is that because he said to you this hadith Muslims be honest is that why because you thought he is telling the truth he said to you that even if he die his body will not you know be destroyed is that why I mean, what's wrong with the Muslims? This is alone is enough to prove that Muhammad is a false prophet. The hadith says clearly, He stink the same as all a human being, they stink. Bury him. Who is the Muslim is willing to call me and make him read the hadith? Any Muslim, he stink as all human they stink. You Muslims are not willing to to face the, the the truth that your prophet obviously got busted. He never thought that if he die, they will not bury him. He never thought they will leave him for three days. <clears throat> Anyone? Do we have any response? I mean, where is the Muslims? Was Muhammad lying when he said prophets of God, their body will not be consumed? 
or he was telling the truth Muslims Do you notice that this ability of the Muslims, not even one of them, he is he dare to call me? They call me names in text. But we cannot find somebody, <clears throat> he can give us any answer because they knew. If they call, it's going to be bad. Very bad. And if you are following someone like Muhammad, he's a joke, he's a stupid, he says stupid things. You better keep your mouth shut when people who knows speak. You know? Otherwise, people will laugh at you. This is what the Muslims exactly they do when they hear me. Anyone? Who will get the reward of Allah and Allah will give him a penis will never go sleep. Should I show you the hadith so you will get excited? I mean, look at this prophet, man. He think about everything. And everything happened for a reason. Right? <clears throat> Why your penis will not sleep? Logic. You need it. What you need it for? Logic. <laughs> why? Why the Muslim his penis will not sleep? Because he have no brain. His penis will be functioning. Is that correct, Muslims? Why Muhammad did not say he will have a brain, and nobody can beat him with that brain? Why he did not promise him his, his followers uh, an amazing intelligence? I mean, which is more important, really? To enjoy life, a penis or intelligence? You see, even sex, even sex is a, is a brain processing joy. It's not physical. Many naive ones, they think it is physical. All the joy you have, it's in your brain. Food, sex, emotion, it is in your brain. So, this is why if somebody, if you killed his brain, he feel nothing. It doesn't matter how many women they touch him, he feel nothing. Because the brain is dead. You can keep the body alive. You can feed him, you know, like there's there, there's something that's called a, a brain dead, which means his heart is working, his body is fine, there's no damage in the body, but the brain, the brain is dead. That's it. It's useless. You can punch him with a needle, he feels nothing. So, Muhammad is not promising the Muslim's brain. For Muhammad, he have only one focus. He knew that his followers, they has no brain, they have a penis. And their major concern is between their legs. It is, the whole concentration is about what between his leg and what is between her legs. The rest is not important. To the point, look what he is saying here. He is not only promising the Muslims that they will have a penis will, will never sleep. He is even describing the front of those women that they will have a beautiful vagina and they have a beautiful breast. Ask yourself, why it's so important for someone he claimed that he is coming from God, speaking for God, giving the promises of God, to make promises about penises and vagina and boobs. Is that a, I mean, is that logical? I mean, what is that? It sounds like a pimp. Well, you know, here it says clearly 
that Allah was going to give you a beautiful uh, uh, a beautiful uh, vagina uh, uh, the women she have a like a, a front you desire do you see it I mean there's no need to explain explain that's it there's a beautiful vagina this vagina and there's a beautiful breast she have a she have a desire like this a, a front you desire her vagina her breast whatever in the same time don't worry your penis will be ready for action this is why the Muslims they are desperately trying to commit suicide they are not they are not committing suicide because they love Allah because they love vagina this is just about the vagina this is this is this is the this is the vagina religion penis vagina <clears throat> They are Zach and Naik, that the Muslim man in the heaven he will have 72 women. What the Muslim women she will, will have, he said, Brother Thur, Brother Thur, you think that they are with him? How come a Muslim man is going to have 72 wives? First of all, the word Hur in the Quran it is a problem, it doesn't mean male, female, or male. So it's possible to be male or female. So the Muslim woman, she is going to have 70 hur. So what Zakir Naik is saying to us, if you are listening, if you are a Muslim, your mother, she will have 70 men to F her. I mean, you must be excited. Your mother, she will be the, 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 the whore of town. She will be in the bedroom, according to Zakir Naik, and her legs will be open wide and there is line of men with big penises and they are doing your mother if you call your mother in that day she might by mistake instead of grabbing the phone she grab a penis that is a religion is that what you Muslims believe in your mother she is going to have 70 what about your dad ah your dad he will be having 70 wives too right so 70 for the this is according to, to stupid uh, Zach and Naik, not me so your wife will be your, your father will be uh, if in 70 women and your mother she will be if in 70 men <laughs> Uh, that's that's fun <clears throat> I remember Islam is a very conservative religion we are conservative to the point our heaven is going to be open sex party do you know guys that in the heaven of Allah you can have sex with your grandmother with your niece with your aunt who is a Muslim here? He dare to say this is not a true. Who is a Muslim? He dare to say this is not a true. Actually, what if I show you that Muslims even allowed to have sex with their daughter now, not in heaven? You see, in Islam, there is two kind. Of relationship <clears throat> there is a relationship from marriage and there is a relationship out of marriage supposedly the marriage of Islam Muslim they claim it's called nukah but the fact nukah is not really a marriage it is a sex contract however we will go with what they say the Quran says what does that mean if we go to chapter 25 verse number 54 <clears throat> we will go to Arabic because in English we see nothing actually always actually the, the English translation the Muslims have have nothing to do with the real thing 
But anyway, I will let you read here for a second before we go. And it is he who created the man from water. He created the, uh, from a, sper a sperm drop of a human being and made for him ties for blood and ties for, of marriage, whether it is be a male or a female. <clears throat> this is not really the accurate explanation. <clears throat> what the Quran is saying, that Allah, he made, Two kinds of relationship, one by marriage and one by lineage. What does that mean? Lineage can be, uh, you know, your seed, but it can be legal seed from marriage or it can be illegal, which means sperm from adultery. Now, Based on this verse, according to the Muslim scholars, that if a Muslim man, he have a sexual relationship with the women, and this woman, she is not his wife, and he made her a breadnet, he can have sex with the mother and his daughter from that mother, for she is not considered his daughter according to Islam. <clears throat> this is the interpretation of Al-Qurtubi and this is the official government of the Kingdom of Jordan. I don't know if Al-Qurtubi, they have a translation for his book already in English. Let me know. Maybe we can show it to people in English. But if you want, you can read it in my book. Uh, I think this is in the second book or the first book. I really I forgot. Deception of Allah, Quran, and science. You, you check it out. Here it says, "Qawlahu Taala, wa huwa ladhi khalaq min al-ma'i bashara, ay khalaq min al-nutfa insanan, fajalahu ay jala al-insan al-nasban wa sahara." To make it simple for you, most of you don't know Arabic. So Allah He said, supposedly, that Allah He created a human being from the water, which means the sperm. And then He said, there is two meaning. For the word and we made it a lineage from marriage from legal relationship. That means that there is no lineage unless it is marriage. This is why you can go right now and search in Google and you will find that a bastard son, sorry to say that word, this is what they use in the language, a bastard son or a daughter, she is not allowed. To inherit the father name the money of the father even to live in the same or under the same roof for she is a daughter or a, a, he is a son of a daughter according to Islam that is the justice of Muhammad so if you had sex with a woman out of marriage and she get a breath net you cannot give your son your name it is haram you cannot give your daughter a name it is haram you cannot give them a child support it is haram you cannot put them under your roof it is haram but you can if your daughter it is halal and this is what it says here in the front of us they say and because Allah he made the relationship and lineage from marriage therefore any mixing between the water which means sexual relationship between a, 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 a male and a female happen only according to the law which means marriage if it is not according to the law and there is no then there is therefore there is no lineage even though you know this is your son or daughter, doesn't matter. Still, there's no lineage. No lineage. Therefore, it does not go under. It is forbidden for you, your mothers and your daughters. So the Quran in the chapter of Anisa, chapter 4, verse 23 says, it's forbidden for you, your mother and your daughter. And he is saying here, the scholar, this is in the case 
of marriage so your daughter from marriage is forbidden but not your daughter from adultery so he continues saying therefore it doesn't go under that uh, band where it says it's forbidden for you your mother and your daughter for she is his daughter from adultery and because she is not considered as a daughter for him in the most accurate opinion of the scholars so the the majority of the muslim they believe this is the most accurate this is the correct way to live according to our scholars and the most accurate according to the to islam therefore if there is no lineage from lawful relationship there is no lawful relationship so it's not forbidden for the man to do adultery with the daughter and the mother of her daughter and what is forbidden from kosher is not forbidden from and kosher which mean because he have it already from adultery well she is not forbidden anyway she is not his daughter so a muslim man if he if you take a muslim man as a boyfriend and he slept with you huh and he made you pregnant i'm speaking now to the women your boyfriend officially and legally and he will not even feel guilty he can have sex with you and your daughter in same bed and you can have a threesome and i am showing the proof in the front of my eyes and this is the link i'm going to post it in the text and i i challenge any muslim he dare to call me right now to say this is not what it says <clears throat> who is a muslim he dare to say this is a lie that is the teaching of the amazing god of islam if you have a daughter from a daughter you can have sex with her if you have a daughter out of a daughter from marriage you cannot wonderful so if you are a stupid woman who is going to sleep with a muslim man hmm, whatever your reason is whatever your stupid reason is you better think it twice before you do so if you made your bread net he will not feel guilty if you one day you come back home and you find him raping his daughter don't be upset I'm showing it to you in front of you it says this is according to the most accurate belief of Islam and the scholars agree with it <clears throat> Any Abdul? Who is Abdul? He have an objection. Any objection? Yeah. Now, I mentioned many things. I don't. I don't see any any Muslim is opposing. Not even a one Muslim saying this is a lie. I mean, what's wrong? The Muslims they give up. <laughs> they give up. They knew. Like, I, mean, I mean, what they can say? I'm showing the reference in the front of their eyes. What they can do? Uh, this guy, he is not saying one word from his pocket. It is what our stupid scholars, what our stupid Quran, what our stupid prophet said. So what we can say to him? How we can say to him he's lying? This is why they don't say anything how we can accuse him of lying like you know uh, 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 in my book I have a reference about Muhammad he killed an uh, an innocent man uh, and the the reference there says Sahih uh, al-Bukhari the the book of al-fatah or al-futuh and the idiot the Muslims they go and search for the number and they say this this hadith doesn't say that you Muslims you idiot do you know what the book of al-futuh or al-fatah mean is that Bukhari itself? Donkeys. You see, when the donkey he tried to be smart, I mean, he looks so funny. 
unbelievable. Don't you see the name of the book? If we say they are Sahih al-Bukhari, that does not mean that this is the book of Sahih al-Bukhari. There's a name next to it. This book is made to explain Sahih al-Bukhari, you prophet followers, the, pro the, the, the prophet of the dump. This book is made to explain what is written in al-Bukhari. So the reference for al-Bukhari, the book is what explain what is in al-Bukhari. But what you can say, garbage in, garbage out. Any Abdul? Who is here first time? Who is here first time listening to us? Please, guys, don't forget to invite your friends so more and more people they will come and, and learn. This is a free education, free school. You see, as you know, as you see, I don't do 15 minutes and I go. As many people who speak against Islam, even though I know that many people like 15 minute videos. I am a person, I am a devoted person for my mission. I give many, many, many hours of my time. Actually, this is what this is my full time mission. But I spend my time to teach full teaching, full education, not 15 minutes, and I say bye bye. So invite your friends. And even if you are busy, you cannot stay for all this time. This is a video, is recorded. You can watch it later. Don't forget to invite your friends. <clears throat> and uh, subscribe. So you will be notified when we have live broadcast. Almost actually, uh, almost every day I have a live broadcast. <coughs> Uh, do we have any Abdul? Any beautiful Muslim would like to say something to us? Any handsome Muslim would like to say something to us? This religion, my friend, is the only religion teach the Muslims that Muslim men, they should be beautiful and Muslim women, they should be handsome. Have you ever heard of a God he got upset from women for taking hair from their face? And he encouraged men to do the opposite. I mean, this is crazy. Why the God of Islam, he like women to have a mustache, to have thick eyebrows. You see, all the women you see, the Muslims, all of them, they are false believers. For, for Muhammad said it clearly, Allah, he cursed the women, she take care from her face. Go and see their eyebrows of the Muslims. They even they draw it, you know, they don't even have eyebrows. Find me one Muslim woman, she have mustache. There is no way. And as you know, most of Muslim women, they are coming from Middle Eastern countries, or even like, let us say, hairy countries, like, you know, Pakistan. Uh, you know, I am, me, myself, I am Middle Eastern. We are hairy. You know, once I was uh, I, swimming in the swimming pool, the security guard, he said to me, sir, you cannot swim with your clothes. I said, you eat it. I'm not wearing my clothes. This is my hair. True story. So we are very hairy people, and women is not allowed to take hair from her face. She will have a beard very soon. So what the point of this God? He got angry if a woman she take hair from her face. Imagine this God. He get happy if a woman she shave her vagina. He gets so upset if a woman she shave her mustache. Like, what the heck? This God is upside down. The women, she should shave maximum of 40 days her vagina. It's a must. Every Muslim woman, she have to do it. But she cannot take care from her face because if she does, Allah will curse her. Why? Why this God is upside down? Any Abdul? <clears throat> Not only that. Even Muhammad, he said, 
that even if a woman if she add a wig or she add a hair extension Allah curse her too <laughs> I mean the curse come upon the women whatever they do any any Muslim can tell us why why anyone a woman she added a, a tail to her hair what the problem with Allah what exactly I mean what is his business you see the guy who created the whole universe he is concerning right now about a woman or a girl she is 14 15 years old she took some hair from her face huh why Actually, there's a hadith about a woman. She lost her hair. She's she became bold in the time of Muhammad, and what a woman she will do. With, I mean, it's normal for a woman then to use to use a wig or to use an because she you know the the beauty of the woman is her hair. Actually, let me let me find you the hadith. Hold on. I don't know if I will find it here because sometimes those this website they hide a lot of things. <clears throat> but I oh, will try. Oh. Mm -hmm. Let us see. I mean, this website is really. Here we go. This one. Look at this. Aisha reported. I hope the text is clear for you guys. Okay, let's read together. Aisha reported that the women from Al Ansar married her daughter, blah, 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 and then. She lost her hair because of illness. So the woman, she had what? She lost her hair. All right. She came to Allah Apostle. And she said, her husband want her, uh, want that false hair should be added to her head. Thereupon, Allah Messenger said, the women who add false hair has been cursed. <laughs> Muslims, why? Allah is happy for the women she is bold. What is business? A man and his has and a man and his wife. She is not putting here to do a billy dancing, you know, like shake it, shake it, and shake her boobs. She is covering. She is covering her head. What is the problem of Allah? Why Allah want to curse a woman because she put a wig? Any Muslim can tell me what is the reason? Let us say a, maybe this woman she have a cancer, but at that time they do not know. Hmm? She lost her hair. Why Allah? Oh, already this woman she have a pain in her life. She is sad. A woman she lose her hair for sure. She is not happy with that. Unless she is hippie, you know, she shaved her hair like zero. She want to be like a man. That's a different story. And even those, if they lose their hair, there's there's a, there's a difference between you lose your hair totally against your will, and you shave it. That's your will. So it's not going to make you upset. So what is the problem of Allah if she added a wig to her head? Any Abdul? In the same time, Muhammad he used to color his hair blonde. Like what the heck? Allah will not curse Muhammad for coloring his hair red. 
the logic of this by the way the Muslim they say because you are changing the way Allah he made you look like ah okay I see very smart so when you do circumcision Muslims are you changing the way Allah made you look like or not huh when you cut that pe that piece from from the vagina and from the penis when you mutilate the women huh the crime you do against them is that a change in the way Allah he made you look like or this is how Allah made you look like when Muhammad he colored his hair red is that how Allah he made him look like when Muhammad he told the Muslim men to shave their mustache and to grow their beard which would make them look like, like a demon is that changing the way Allah make you look like or no Allah make you with mustache actually Muhammad he used to do sugar anyone do know what sugar I'm talking about anyone knows what sugar is what sugar anyone knows when a Middle Eastern person he said to you women they do sugar what does that what does that mean anyone understand waxing the way they do it they you know they bring either from like a tree uh, you know uh, uh, the, you know the drop of a tree or it's sugar from a, a plant and they boil it and etc and became so thick and then they put it over their skin and they take it off fast the same as you do wax, waxing today uh, but they use it from sugar now what if I show you that Muhammad himself used to do sugar how come if the women she take hair from her face Allah will curse her and Muhammad he is doing sugar to all his body he doing waxing Imagine Muhammad is laying down and somebody doing waxing for his ass. Why in the world the God of Islam he get upset from a woman for taking hair from her face, but he is not upset from Muslim men and Muhammad doing sugar and waxing. Yeah, but you need to know that the anus of the Prophet Muhammad, it's amazing. You know? Actually, there's a hadith that says, uh, you know, it's, Islam is, uh, is religion. My coming book is going to be very funny. Just wait. When you get my, my coming book, it's about sex in Islam. Muslims themselves, they will die from the stupid sexuality of their religion. Just wait. I'm almost there, almost there, <clears throat> almost done. I, I want uh, I want the Muslim to call me and challenge me. I don't know where are they. And you know, if you are a Muslim and you have a little, little, little tiny dignity left on you after killing and stabbing people in the street, raping uh, Western women, uh, kidnapping some Christian girls from Nigeria, or bombing some Christian churches in Pakistan. If you have little dignity left, ask yourself, is what your prophet saying is a stupid statement or it is a smart? Do you really, Muslim, like to have a woman, she your wife, she lose her hair, and she is sitting next to you bald? And your wife, she liked to have a wig. Huh? Do you think really Allah should curse her for having a wig? A woman, she is suffering from illness. Why Allah will be upset? Upset from the women adding a wig? Not upset from Muhammad coloring his hair red? He want to be redhead? And forbidding the Muslims from coloring their hair with black? Everything in this religion is upside down. Do we have any Muslim here would like to call us? What is the question this guy is repeating? 
Mohan six nine nine nine. What 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 is the question, guys? What he asked? I didn't see his question. What was his question? <coughs> what he was asking? I did not notice his text. I mean, a Muslim and he have a question. That will be weird. Muslims don't have a question; they have copy paste. No such a thing as turn throne. God, what, what does that mean? Somebody can translate for me. Throne, throwing God. Will your God Jesus was circumcised? <laughs> Let me ask you, uh, uh, Abdul, was your God Allah circumcised? Abdul, was your God Allah circumcised? Let me ask you another that, 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 that will make it simple for you more more easy to understand Is it true that your God Allah himself he circumcised Muhammad? Is that a true that your prophet never been circumcised by a man? Allah he circumcised him. Is that true? Allah he hold the penis of Muhammad and he did circumcision for him Is that true? What he did? Did he bite it? Did he use a scissor? And he must might tell us how Allah he did circumcision for Muhammad. Any answer? You know, we as a Christian we believe that Jesus he grew between the Jews and he practiced the law of the Jews so it's very normal to for him to be circumcised by the body Jesus was a crucified too Jesus he died too so whatever happened to a human being happened to him what is the problem that will not impact who is Jesus at the end as an example Allah the God of Islam is a leg if we put a shoe in the leg, is that will change that Allah is God of Muslims? If we cut the nail of the toes of Allah, as long as your God, Allah is a leg, is that going to make Allah missing a nail? Or he stay Allah? Allah have a physic Allah is a physical being. Is he a physical being with penis or without penis? Mukhan, I want an answer because the Quran says that if Allah he want to if a woman he will if a woman from those who they are in heaven is that correct who is a Muslim he there to say it's not true who is a Muslim he there you know what there mean he dared to say that Allah did not say that if he want to have a woman to if her as a wife or a girlfriend he will take them from the black-eyed women who is a Muslim he dared to say so let us go to the interpretation of the Quran and get the Abdul busted as usual switch to English we go to chapter 21 verse number 17 in a second you will see the Muslim trying to change the topic he don't want to talk about Jesus being circumcised no more he want to talk about something else just wait right away when you start giving them the spank they deserve right away he changed the topic this is your God Allah is speaking about himself that if he desired to have a girlfriend to if her he will choose a girlfriend from the Huris. But those Huris, aren't they the same women you are going to have sex with in the heaven? And Allah, he consider that the Huris is our self, which means they are from his kind. How do you explain that to me? 
if your God Allah does not have a penis how Allah is going to take a partner as a wife or a girlfriend and she is a woman but he don't have a penis Ah, he will use his nose I knew it I was thinking what Allah will do he have no penis maybe he will use his finger maybe he will use his pinky God does not have image that's a lie that's a lie Abdul I can show you your prophet himself saying that and the Quran is saying that are you stupid or what the Quran says Allah have a face, Allah have a hand, Allah have a foot, Allah etc. You know, if we go right now and search in you in Google, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, in the front of your eyes. I mean, why we need to go anywhere? Let us go to YouTube. What is YouTube? Here we go. Clean the screen, YouTube. All right, let us go here. We will say Allah has hands. You see all those videos? All those videos explain Allah hands how they look like. Allah has two hands. Allah have a foot. Allah has a face. And I think he looked like this guy. So what do you mean Allah has no image, you idiot? Are you a donkey or a donkey? So all your scholars, they teach that Allah have hands, Allah have a foot, Allah have a, a, a lips, Allah have teeth, Allah he bite, Allah he shit, Allah etc. And then you say to me, Allah has no image, so what he have? His hand is an image? Are they fake? I like this guy when he said Allah will show his beautiful magnificent foot <laughs> Allah what Allah is going to show his magnificent foot when he said the word magnificent he remind me with the magnificent seven so what do you mean Allah does not what what, what metaphorical you eat it what metaphorical <clears throat> guys I challenge the Muslim to tell me what is the metaphorical of the foot of Allah. Here we go, metaphorical. Let, let us go with the let us go with the dump. Let us assume he is the smart and we are the dumb. Okay, what is the metaphorical of the foot of Allah? Tell us we are listening. Allah have a foot. What is the metaphorical of his foot? Hello? Hello? What is the metaphorical of the foot? Allah have a foot. What is the metaphorical of it? Explain. I mean, can't you find me a smart Muslim ever? Can't you? Just even once? Are you searching Google to find the metaphorical of the foot of Allah? Go watch the video right now. I wish I can play it for you. You will die from laughing. Metaphorical, eh? You Muslims are all of you are a bunch of metaphorical. Even the penis of your prophet was metaphorical. It was it was not real. Aisha, she said that the prophet he imagined himself having sex, but in fact he never did. It was metaphorical. Have you ever heard of a prophet even his sex was metaphorical, like Muhammad? What do you mean the guy he was imagining himself having sex, but in fact he did not? We have a metaphorical marriage and a metaphorical penis and metaphorical vagina. Uh, I mean, I was wondering why it was metaphorical sex. Oh, oh this is deep. This is really deep. How come I never thought about it this way? The prophet continued for such and such. Let me let me change the translation, guys, to make it fit with the Abdul in the text translation. 
or interpretation. The prophet used for such and such period, imagine that he had metaphorical sexual intercourse. Are you happy now? Are you happy? Seriously. I mean, I cannot make it better than this. Was that a metaphorical sex too? So what the prophet used to do he married 13 women according to muslims doing what with them exactly he was using what his pinky what what exactly was happening there metaphorical he imagined himself having sex but in fact he was looking for boogers it was his nose hello stupid religion garbage in garbage out this is why i say to you i challenge you to find me a smart abdul it's impossible it is a truly truly impossible well I, what, what do you mean too much okay if, if you are shy don't watch you better go sleep watch uh, watch cartoon uh, mickey mouse by the way is on mickey mouse and by the way do you know that mickey mouse is wanted by muslims Imagine the stupid Muslims, they have a fatwa against Mickey Mouse, for he is the enemy of Allah. Why? Because Muhammad, he said, that the enemy of Allah is the mice. Look, what the heck? The enemy of Allah is the mice. Allah and the mice are in war? A mice? Allah? The one who created this universe, his name is Allah, supposedly according to Muslim, and he have a war with the mice. By the way, as long as we are talking about the mice, do you know the story of Adam when he went in his ship? What was his problem? Anyone remember? Who remember what happened to Adam? It have to do with the mice. Anyone remember? <clears throat> Not Adam, sorry, Noah, Noah, Noah. The story of Noah. Anyone remember? That Phil, Phil for sure he know. Phil Horia he know it. So we want somebody else. Who knows what happened? <coughs> when Noah, he went inside his ship, he found a mice. Psst, oh boy. And now Noah is worried that his mice or this mice is going to eat his food. So now he needs to find a cat. He could not find a cat. Look how embarrassing. However, Allah, he made the lion have a flu. And he was so sick so Noah was able to carry the sick lion and put him in the ship and the lion when he was in the ship he sneezed and when he sneezed a cat came from his mouth Allahu Akbar true story any Muslim he dared to say to me that I am lying hello Allah, he made the, the lion sneeze and a cat came from the mouth of the lion? Hey, Muslims, what the cat was doing there? I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, like, do you think she was sleeping overnight? <laughs> oh, stupid religion. <coughs> I was going to sneeze, by the way, but I don't. God knows. I mean, Allah knows what is going to come from my mouth if I sneeze. You never know cats, elephants, tigers. You never know, and we might even have meh. Any Abdul? Hello. <coughs> Who is a Muslim? He have problem with what we was saying here. Don't forget to subscribe because at the end of the month, especially in the New Year evening, which is Halal evening, Allah will give versions. I will give you a version like Madonna. She's very virgin. You see, Madonna, the actor or the singer, she is very much as virgin as the versions Allah will give in the heaven. Imagine that according to the Abdul, 
that those women after they have sex with them like a thousand and thousand and millions of times they are staying virgins <laughs> in Muslims why they stay virgins is that because you are doing metaphorical sex hmm? oh no each time you finish with her Allah he put his finger there and he make her virgin again but don't you think this is stupid and silly to believe that she is virgin you just have sex with her so what is the virgin about her What is what is the point of saying that those women they will stay virgins? You just had sex with them a second ago, and now they are virgin again. Why? What the point? Ah, you enjoy seeing women in pain. Ah, it's a sexual joy. Ah, you Muslims like to do like hurt sex, like, huh? You like to hurt others, and you watch. Is that what the point? Why? Why? I, I want to know why are you? Why Allah will keep them virgin for you? First of all, this is a cheating, and not only this. You know, like you see, we are jumping from topic to topic. Sorry for that, but because Muslims they are not calling. What I can say? You know, the women in the heaven, you will have sex with them. They are going to look like a jellyfish. I'm serious. You can see the marrows of their bones. Which is so beautiful, Oof, unbelievable. Imagine you have a wife. Uh, and you can see her bones, the marrow of her bones. Oof, oh, sexy man. You can see the food inside her belly, man. This is very hot. Oof, oof, oof. Look at this, look at this. Allahu Akbar Allah will provide us with women like jellyfish Beautiful the Prophet said the first batch hold on hold on there's this sec first batch second batch Hey Muslims Shabir Ali which in which batch will be you think or did that did that which one the first batch who is going to be there Huh, the Arab, the Arab, <laughs> the relative of Muhammad for sure, the Arab. <laughs> All right. So the first batch of people who will enter paradise, they will be glittering. Actually, it doesn't say that. They will see. They will be white. You remember we showed you before in the Quran. It says, that they were faces will turn white and faces will turn black." So most of them try to lie to us and they say this is metaphorical liar I can show you what your prophet said and what the scholar says about this that Allah he will make you literally black if you are a disbeliever in the cult of Muhammad and Allah will make you blonde white very white if you are a believer in Islam so in the first day the first, the most close to Allah is the most white ones. To the point they will be like the white moon in the middle of the night. Eww. And the next patch will be glittering like a most brilliant star, which is a stupid because moon is not more bright than a star, you idiot. Their heart will be as if the heart of a single man. If 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 all of them they are copy paste. For they will have neither enmity nor jealousy among themselves if they have no jealousy So why Allah is going to jail the women for them in the tent? If they have no jealousy When a woman in heaven and yet she is jailed inside a tent. This is what the Quran said They are jailed in the tent Obviously there is a lot of jealousy and then there's there's a narration about how high the walls of the tent so nobody can see What do you mean? There's no jealousy continue continue and Then everyone will have two wives from the Huris only two. I'm so upset and Who will be so beautiful pure transparent? <laughs> you guys do you know why I'm still single? Do you understand now why I'm still single? This is my dream. I'm looking for a transparent woman. If there is any lady from those who they are listening transparent, any one of you, 
is he qualified for the job of being my wife as a transparent wife transparent a woman and she is a transparent uh-huh what kind of a transparent abdul ah uh, brother this is a metaphorical abdul it says here to the point you can see the marrow of their bones what metaphorical huh god he is a promise in me a transparent woman I can see through her bones any Abdul that's I don't know I think let me let me show you how your wife in heaven will look like hold on hold on I will give you a close example an image don't worry I'm not going to show you about pictures or anything no but I'm going to show you something very close to the women in heaven all right a brother Oh, this is uh, this is YouTube. We cannot use it. Hold on. They will complain of copyright. We cannot do that. Brother, this is your wife, and she is wearing high heels. If, if, how beautiful! Allahu Akbar! If. This is so hot, man. Look at this beauty. Finally, I found my dream wife. Transparent. Do you see the high heels? Muslim, do you see the high heels? I don't think she it is it is a la lady boy I hope not <laughs> I mean look at this man Eesh. wow finally finally we are in heaven I do not need to go to the heaven of Allah I need to buy an x-ray machine this is what Allah is going to promise me in heaven okay Abdul I'm going to give you more entertaining positions so you can imagine what you will have exactly in the heaven if 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 look at this she is turning her bum to you what the heck look at this oh wow if, if, guys i have to go i cannot continue like this this is too much Look at this. I mean, I am speechless. I will get this in heaven. All of this, I, I, Allah, are they going to come with high heels? Uh, I mean, the, is the high heels included or they will be with no shoes? I, I like the high heels, by the way. So uh, please uh, send me the high heels with them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what a stupid religion, man. This is what you are trying to say to the, the dumb, ignorant ones in the West, saying to them, Islam is amazing. The Prophet of Allah is amazing stuff. Allah is amazing God. Quran have science. Yeah, Quran, you have a dumb. Quran have a science. Who is, who is the Muslim going to call me and show me the science of the Quran so we can laugh and die laughing? Transparent women? You will see the marrows of their bones. And that would make her beautiful. What a dumb religion. 
Uh, by the way, there's a benefit about having a wife. She is transparent. If she ever take any money from your wallet, you can see it doesn't matter where she have it. You know what I mean? You will have a lot of wives in heaven. What if they try? They try start taking your money and you know buying hamburgers and sandwiches with it. You know you will see everything. If a, if your wife she ate your hamburger, I mean you will know exactly. You do not need to ask even who is the one who ate it. You will see the hamburger jumping inside her belly. I, I cannot keep this picture there because it's full of temptation. Sorry, I, I forgive me, guys. We have to switch for something more uh, more beautiful. Oh, look at this. Oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, who is the idiot who, who made those pictures? I have no idea. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I just saw I just saw one. I, I, I'm shy to show it to you in the in the screen. <laughs> They have an x-ray of two jellyfish having sex. <laughs> oh boy, that's it. Uh, we cannot continue. Look, if your wife is next to you and she have her foot next to your head and you are looking at her foot, oof, so beautiful. I mean, that is heaven. That is heaven itself. Who can resist such a beauty? Mimi Abdul? There is no doubt that Muhammad is a prophet of God. And it doesn't matter how much those who they are infidels try to put him down. Obviously, he is a prophet of God. Imagine you are looking at the, the beautiful teeth of your wife. Look at this, how beautiful it is. This is what you are going to kiss. I mean, isn't it? This is beautiful. That's fantastic. That's my dream. And you guys, you keep asking me why I'm not getting married. After I read all those information in the Quran, I cannot accept any woman unless she fit with the description of the Hadith and the Quran. At least like 50%. So don't play me, please. So if there is any lady, she is listening now or after 20 years or 50 years to this video, or even after I die. If you are qualified to be transparent, then you are qualified to apply to be my wife. And uh, there is other qualification, sorry. You have to have a mustache because Allah, he forbid you from taking hair from your face. I mean, this God, he wanna make me marry a woman or a man? A woman, she is not allowed to take hair from her face and she grow a beard. Any Abdul? Huh? I'm not going to talk about that private part if it's going to be obviously the everything there is going to be transparent, including what is between her, you know. But let us stay here. Hey, by the way, Muslims, what about the man? He will be transparent too, or only the women will be transparent. Are you going to be why Muhammad he said the women she will be transparent, not the man? Any Muslim can explain to us? So, like a Muslim woman when she is having sex with her husband, is she going to see what is inside the man too? Or only you see? It's just a question. I mean, what why the women only have a you can see this through the marrow of their bones. Why Muhammad did not say, and their men, they will be able to see through their morals. Uh, maybe the men, they will be transgender. So the women, they will be transparent. <laughs> the men, they will be transgender. Truly, it's possible. Look like it. 
actually according to Muhammad you remember the hadith he said that in the heaven there is a market where there is no buying nor selling except images of men and women do you remember <clears throat> in the heaven uh, let me find you the hadith <coughs> in the heaven there is a market a bazaar a mall whatever you call it supermarket and there is no buying neither selling except images of men and women which mean in the heaven of Islam Muslim men they will be a bisexual Jamia Turmudi chapter of description of paradise had narrated that the messenger of Allah said okay what he said uh, there is a market which there is no buying nor selling except images of men and women So whenever a man desire an image he enter it You see Muhammad he created this fancy fantasy porn movies long time ago In his heaven there's no buying nor selling except for one product only one product which means there is buying and there is selling but only for one thing this 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 selling and buying is not for like uh, condoms uh, shish kebab hummus no only for images of men and women so you go inside the market and there they will have a display of endless images of men and women Read with me, men and women. But the customer is a man. Look what it says. So whenever a man, a man, the customer is who? The buyer is what? Is a man. Desire an image. He will not take the image with him home. No, no. In the spot, he will enter. If he desire an image, he will enter it, which means he will have sex with it. So the market have images. And those images of men and women so the desire will be in the heaven of a man is allowed for him to have sex with men and women and it's very easy it's a playboy magazine you like a picture you get in have sex with them let us say there's ten guys in this picture and you are a homo may Allah bless you and uh, keep your penis safe from all the evil uh, and you know, you know, you look in the picture in the magazine. There is a picture of a twelve guys, thirteen guys, fourteen guys, whatever. So you can jump with them and have sex. I mean, do you see the mercy of Allah? Beautiful. Who can, who can seriously, like reject such a heaven? It must be true. But by the way, Muslims, it says buying and selling. So what is the price for this? Is it expensive? <clears throat> is it really expensive? Can we afford it in heaven? Because he's saying there, there's buying and selling. So what the money will be? What we will use? We will use like a great card? Any Abdul? No, no, the hadith is not a proven Muhammad is a liberal. It's a proven Muhammad that he is a perverted, stupid in the same time. He have a perverted mind, speaking to perverted mind people. They have a mental issue, all of them. And he himself is a stupid like them. Because, you know, even if you are a stupid, I mean, those, like, you know, what the point of a promising a woman that she is a transparent? I mean, this is really stupid. What transparent? Why in the world anyone want to have sex with a transparent woman? Do we have any Abdul? You see, the Muslim is is uh, is worried about Jesus. He ate fish. <laughs> he is not worried about his mother. She will be with seventy men. 
lifting up her legs in heaven. <laughs> He's worried about Jesus ate fish. <laughs> Stupid Muslims. <clears throat> Any brave Abdul he would like to call me. Who is a Muslim would like to call? Anyone? Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Are we out of them? If you are new, don't forget to subscribe. We have at least three broadcasts in three days a week. But actually, usually I do more. You can check my YouTube and you will see almost every day or two we have a podcast. But we have a fixed date, which is you know, Sunday, 4.30 p.m. New York time, and Wednesday and Friday, all in the same time, 4.30 p.m. New York time. But we do broadcast between in the same time. <clears throat> so subscribe, and if you are a Muslim, I encourage you to ask your scholar. I understand that you are scared to call. Maybe your knowledge is not good. Maybe you cannot, you don't have answers. So what about you talk to the ones who think or they claim that they do have answers and let them call me. I encourage you Muslims to do so. <laughs> and you sit and watch. And let us see how your scholars they can do or your sheikh, the one is teaching you in the mosque. Either your your sheikh is going to show everybody that this guy is not telling the truth or he's wrong or whatever, or your scholar will be, you know, in a trouble and he will show that his prophet is a shish kebab. Anyone? Nobody. So I want to say, guys, thank you for being here. We have enough for today. Uh, I might be here tomorrow, I'm not sure. And uh, uh, I would like all of you to invite your friends to subscribe to our channel. If every one of you brought five people a week, we can have a, a huge group of people subscribing so fast and we grow so fast as usual. So please invite your friends, tell them about what we do. As you see here, uh, you know, we share the truth as it is. We are not politically correct. Uh, we don't say things for just to make someone happy. We say it as it is. And we don't uh, say, sir, and uh, you are right if you are not, sir, and you are not right. We say things for a reason. So whatever we say here, it is how it should be. We don't believe in hypocrisy and we don't believe that we should say something we don't believe in so invite your friends they have a questions they can call me uh, especially if you have Muslims uh, encourage them to come and debate me and show them that their religion is not capable of giving answers actually it is a confusing religion show them that what they been taught about Islam it is absolutely false and you can witness to that right here in this channel let them call me challenge them to debate let them call them you know let's bring the best of them and let us see what they can do all right so i want to say thank you for being here guys we have enough for today it's time to go back for me to work in my book i want to say god bless and may the lord keep you all in good health and wealth and I pray that the Muslims who get always offended with my words to be offended more so they can read and think carefully about why their religion is so offending. It's not me who is offending you. It is the stupidity of your prophet. I'm just showing you how dumb, how stupid your religion is. So you get offended for a reason. And that reason is you have a stupid religion or what I did I just put the stupidity of your cult on the display and the rest is yours so thank you very much
May the Lord bless you all. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And we see you very soon again. Thank you.